welcome to the show, Social Security, Securing Today and Tomorrow. I am sure that you have received a call recently from a person stating that they are with the Social Security Administration. Maybe if you have not received the call, one of your family members, a friend, a coworker, or somebody in your neighborhood. Beware, because that is most likely a scam. And today we have um, a guest from the Federal Trade Commission, Ms. Christina Miranda, who is going to tell us all about scams. Christina, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you for inviting me. Oh, we are very happy that you are able to be with us today. And um, what I would like to ask you first is, can you tell us a little bit um, about, you work for the Federal Trade Commission, the Consumer Division, Education mm -hmm. Division. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us what exactly you do? So I work in the Consumer and Business Education Division, and mm -hmm. my job is to protect consumers from fraud and scams and to educate them as much as we can through videos, mm -hmm. uh, through our website, through our blogs, as to how to protect themselves from losing money to a lot of different scams that are happening around the United States. Uh, yes, and I was reading some reports, you know, I think that uh, just in 2019, there were about 48 billion robocalls. And the Social Security Office of Inspector General, as a matter of fact, received about 478,000 complaints of people, you know, receiving these calls. The Social Security scam. What can you tell us about the Social Security scam and what the viewers can do to prevent this? Right. It's a very serious scam that's been happening more and more. It's affecting a lot of older people, but it's affecting the other people in general mm -hmm. as well. So what happens with that scam, as you well know, is that maybe you receive a phone call out of the blue. It might be a robocall, somebody saying that your accounts, your, your benefits are about to be suspended. Mm -hmm. uh, Social Security benefits are about to be suspended. Uh, you might receive even a letter in the mail from the government saying that your account is going to be suspended. Your Social Security benefits are about to be suspended. And it causes quite an alarm because you just don't expect that. And it urges you to call back you know, to see, mm -hmm. you know, what you can do about it. Uh, sometimes when you receive the call, the caller ID might show that the call is coming from the Social Security Administration. Yes. You have to remember that a lot of these phone numbers can be faked um, and the government mm -hmm. will never call you. They will not reach out to you in that way. So when you receive a call from a scammer, um, it might, for example, that when they say they're from the Social Security Administration, they might say, mm -hmm. we'd like to verify your Social Security number. Mm -hmm. Um, in order to uh, reactivate your account, otherwise it's going to be seized. Uh, then right then and there they might put on some pressure tactics and they might urge you, well, in order to get this resolved right away, you need to pay us. Yeah. Usually they ask you to wire money, but more often than not, they're starting to ask people to pay with gift cards. Yes, and uh, that is really scary because, you know, as you said, anybody and everybody can receive these calls. I just received somebody uh, called the office and they said their child has actually received one of those calls mm -hmm. that they didn't know what it was. And um, yes, sometimes, you know, we do reviews, the Social Security Administration does reviews, and sometimes, yes, we will send you a letter, we will call you. But that is only if you are really transacting a business with us. So just be aware, and in order to protect our viewers, for them to learn a little bit more, I think that you have a video information that you would like to share with us. We do, um, mm -hmm. but before I, but before we go into the video, I just want to alert people mm -hmm. that anyone that calls you out of the blue or sends mm -hmm. you a letter out of the blue that claims to be from the government, you really need to act with caution. If someone calls you out of the blue, hang up and mm -hmm. then call the, the agency that supposedly exactly. called you, not using the number that you saw on your on mm -hmm. your ID, but use an actual number that you know to be true, to be credible. Um, and also anyone that asks you immediately, they have pressure tactics to pay with money, that is also a sign mm -hmm. of some type of scam. But, Correct. Um, but yes, as you alluded to, let's take a look at the Social Security Administration scam video where we have um, one of our FTC um, principals, Monica Vaca, that talks a little bit uh, more about this type of scam and also it interviews two victims and we can see what happened. Exactly. Let's watch the video then. I got a phone call. Someone identified himself as a representative of the Social Security Office and that a warrant, a no-bail warrant, had been issued for my arrest. I'm 
83 years old and it scared me to death. The social security imposter scam is very widespread right now. What these scammers are trying to do is they're trying to induce a state of fear. They're trying to make you feel very, very panicked. They actually said federal authorities, including an armed marshal, would appear at my door within the next 24 hours. That had me sort of uh, feeling jittery. Sometimes they'll ratchet up that anxiety by telling you that there are marshals or police officers or sheriff's deputies that are about to arrest you. That's very, very scary for people. Uh, so what they're doing is they're playing on your fear, on your anxiety, and on you wanting to do the right thing. That's how they're going to next try to control the next actions that you take. And they told me to get in, the, in my car, drive to the store, and get uh, a Google Play card and put the $500 on it and give them the number. Once they've got those PIN numbers, they've got your money. So how do you take control back? Well, the first thing you want to do is just stop and take a breath. Take a moment and say, okay, thanks for the call. I need to investigate uh, what's going on here. Hang up the phone. Uh, go talk with somebody that you trust. Do an, uh, a search on the internet. When it happens, let other people know because the more that it's talked about, the better armed people are to behave assertively when somebody's behaving aggressively toward them. Since then, I have told everyone that I know and a whole lot of people that I don't know. This scam is hitting all parts of the United States and it is hitting people at every age level, every education level, every income level. If this isn't happening to you, this is happening to your neighbors. This is happening in your community. So if it does happen to you, please talk about it. We know that when people are familiar with scams, they are much less likely to lose money. Report it to the FTC at ftc.gov slash complaint. Yes, it is amazing, um, you know, what these people are doing, okay? But the only way that we all can protect ourselves is to be in the know, to, to learn more, uh, to contact the agencies, to make those reports, file those reports. And, and of course, you know, there are many kinds of scams, Christina. Can you tell us a little bit about other scams that are going on at this particular oh, time? Oh my goodness, I'm so glad that you asked me that because we have a webpage at mm -hmm. consumer.ftc.gov. Um, a more direct web page would be ftc.gov mm -hmm. uh, slash imposters that talks about the various imposter scams that a lot of people are, are experiencing. Mm -hmm. Among them are the SSA scam that we spoke about, the IRS scam, uh, tech support scams, nanny and caregiver scams, family emergency scams. On that particular page, we have a lot of information about what to look out for in order to help you detect and also to stop these type of scams. Yes, and I heard that there is also what they call like a gift card scam. Can you tell us a little bit about a gift card scam? How does that work? You know, that's one of my favorite topics right now mm -hmm. about fraud. Not, not favorite in a good way, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm just glad that we're talking about it more. Um, you know, it used to be that imposters of any kind used to ask you to pay them mm -hmm. for something out of the blue with wire transfer, um, you know, and now they're asking more often for these gift cards. One thing I want everybody to remember, if someone is asking you to pay them with a gift card because you owe an IRS debt, because your social mm -hmm. security benefits are gonna be suspended, because they're a member of the military and they need help, because there's a family emergency that all of a sudden someone calls you out of the blue and says, oh, they're in the hospital, they need money, mm -hmm. because someone's threatening you with arrest or deportation. It is always a scammer. No one should ask you to pay them with a gift card at any time. Not with Amazon, not with iTunes, not with Google Play or anything. Gift cards are for gifts. They are not for paying mm -hmm. someone. If you receive a phone call or a text saying that you must pay somebody with a gift card, hang up, it is a scammer. The other thing that, mm -hmm. I, uh, that, I will re that I will mention is that a lot of times we are seeing in the complaints that when this type of scam happens, the scammer likes to keep people on the telephone if they're called. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they will tell them, you, in order to pay this off immediately or to keep from your social security uh, benefits from being suspended, you need to stay on the phone with me while you drive to Walmart, to Target, to CVS, to Walgreens mm -hmm. or whatever, to buy me a gift card to pay off this debt. 
So we ha there have been stories of people like putting their phones in their purse or just staying on the line with you know the scammer as the scammer coaches them through what to do and what to say to the cashier in case the cashier wants to stop them from you know or help mm -hmm. them spot a scam and stop them from buying gift cards. And so that's a sign of a scam. If somebody is on the phone with you trying to tell you what to say and what to do and how to go about buying a gift card, that is a red flag. You need to hang up right away. You need to call the card issuer. You need to report it to the police and also please report it to the FTC at ftc.gov slash complaint. Now you know why I'm so passionate about it. It's a really great topic. Yes, and, and of course, you know, what can a person, if somebody has already bought the, the, the card, you said that they can report to the car issuer, right. so that way they can get the money back? And well, you know, here's the problem, mm -hmm. is gift cards are like cash. Mm -hmm. uh, once you buy a gift card and that money is used, you can't really trace it and you can't get it back. That's what makes it so desirable for scammers to use. But I will say this, at ftc.gov slash gift cards, we have a list of contacts for Google Play, for iTunes, for Amazon, for mm -hmm. MoneyPack, et cetera, that if you feel that you have been scammed by using a gift card, you can go there and call the numbers that we have listed there that mm -hmm. are always updated, or emails that we have listed there, and call or contact that card issuer immediately, but it has to be immediately. With certain cards, you might get lucky, I'm not saying that you will, mm -hmm. that they might be able to stop the payment or they might okay. be able to get some money back, but that is not always the case. I would say like 90% of the time, you're not gonna see that money again. Yes, and, and of course, you know, I also heard there is another scam going on, a romance scam, huh? online dating scam. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, I can only imagine just by <laughs> listening to the name what, what this is like. Yes. Okay, so can you tell us a little bit, um, how did that work? I mean, you know, um, the romance scams are really interesting, you know, especially right now as we're, we're heading into the new year and we're going mm -hmm. into February, there are a lot of people thinking, well, you know, I want to try something new in my life. I need, you know, mm -hmm. I need something. And um, they go online, they go on Facebook, uh, they go on online dating sites and they try to find true love. Mm -hmm. And what's happening is that a lot of the times, some of the profiles that you're seeing there of people are actually fake profiles. Um, these are scammers that are basically wanting to rob you of your money. And what happens? Mm -hmm. They use emotional tactics for you. They start saying, oh, you're cute mm -hmm. and I'm falling in love with you and it's love at first sight. They want to get you off a social media platform to talk personally, maybe on your email or maybe mm -hmm. on your phone. That's a, that's a big sign. And they start telling you a story. Oh, I'm working on an oil platform somewhere. I'm always working overseas. I'm a doctor in an international organization. Mm -hmm. I'm a member of the military, uh, fallen in love with you, and I need for you to pay me money in order to, so that I can see you, so I can buy a plane ticket, or maybe I have a family emergency that I need money for. Um, the, the thing is, is that they profess mm -hmm. love to you right away. They kind of pull you along, and they always ask you for money. If someone's asking you for money, it's a mm -hmm. scam. It's definitely a scam. You need to stop communicating with them immediately and you need to report it to the FTC at ftc.gov slash complaint. Yeah. So what happened in reality to the old fashioned dating, right? That's a good question. <laughs> yes, because somebody that is telling you all those lies. That's a very of good course, question. You know. and, and where can people uh, get more information, Christina? Where can people report if they believe that they have been um, scammed? You know, we have a really uh, great infographic and we have a video on romance scams. Looking for love in all the right places? Like popular dating sites, mobile apps, and social networking sites? Ron seems like a perfect match for you. He's thoughtful and says he can't live without you. He says he's from the U.S. but works out of the country. He says he wants to visit but says he can't afford it. He asks you to send him money. Last month, it was medical bills for his sick aunt. This month, he needs money to fix his car. Next month, who knows? Ron wants your money. Don't send it. The person pretending to be Ron is a scammer. He'll tell you anything to get you to wire cash right away. He'll never run out of excuses. If an online love interest asks you for money, walk away, no matter how compelling the story. Report scams at ftc.gov slash imposters. 
and also look up romance scams on our consumer website at consumer.ftc.gov. As always, please report to the FTC mm -hmm. when you see a, a scam or fraud that's happening or if you become victim of one, ftc.gov slash complaint. Now, I will say this because we have a lot of comments coming in mm -hmm. on our blog. Oh, the FTC doesn't do anything with these complaints or anything like that. That's not true. We cannot respond to every single complaint that Correct. there is out there. But please know that your complaint is being read. It's going into a, a database mm -hmm. where our investigators are taking a hard look at it and establishing patterns patterns of companies and individuals that are committing these frauds and hopefully maybe we would be able to bring a case against them. Yes, and it's the same with us What Social Security. We have the Office of Inspector General. We have provided the information before. And when I said before that up to November of last year, we received 478,000 complaints, the Office of Inspector General knows that we must have many, many, many more, more. But, but people are not reporting these scams. Right. And reporting is the only way that your agency, my agency, the IRS, because there is a scam with the IRS mm -hmm. too, uh, will get to the people uh, behind these scams. So yeah. it's very important that people report. And please, please, once again, if you receive a call from a caller stating that they are calling from the Social Security Administration, be careful. It might be that is one of these scammers. If you are receiving benefits, if you are conducting a business with us, it will be better that you call our toll-free number, you, and initiate the, the call, start the call. Okay, uh, we have to go to a short uh, break, but we will be right back. Stay with us, please. In today's connected world, personal information sometimes falls into the wrong hands, and that can lead to identity theft. It might start with an unfamiliar charge on your credit card, a business might not accept your check, or a debt collector might call you about a bill that isn't yours. You're not alone. Identity theft can happen to anyone. Stay calm. Visit identitytheft.gov to report it and get a personal recovery plan. IdentityTheft.gov helps you create an identity theft report. This report proves to businesses that someone stole your identity and makes it easier to fix problems caused by identity theft. To create an identity theft report, you can file a complaint with the Federal Trade Commission. IdentityTheft.gov guides you through each step of the recovery process. You can generate the letters and forms you need, track your progress, and keep detailed records of people you've talked to. No matter what your identity theft situation is, identitytheft.gov can help because recovering from identity theft is easier with a plan. Hello, welcome back to the show Social Security Securing Today and Tomorrow. We are talking to Christina Miranda from the Federal Trade Commission. We're talking about anything and everything about scams and identity theft. And before we start talking about identity theft, Christina, can you tell us a little bit more, please, about where people can find more information about scams, the different scams, and what are the resources people have? Yes, we have a lot of resources available for people you need to visit our website at consumer.ftc.gov. That is our premier website mm -hmm. where you can get blogs, all the information about the various scams and fraud that are happening. You can keep up to date with it. You can order free resources in English and in Spanish at ftc.gov uh, slash bulk order as well. Of course, you know, people can also still go to the website, visit your website, visit our website, learn more. Right. So that is the only way that if they learn more, they can take the steps today to protect themselves. That's right. And um, always remember mm -hmm. to uh, file a complaint with us at ftc.gov slash complaint. Of course. Filing the complaint is important because, first of all, that is the only way uh, that um, our investigators are going to get to the people behind these scans, behind identity theft. So it's important, important that uh, people file complaints. Our Office of Inspector General, out of the 478,000 reports they received as of November of last year, they believe there are many more that people are not reporting. So we need people to report those scams. Um, sus sus 
is suspicious of identity theft if somebody thinks it's a victim. And in terms of identity theft, uh, what can you tell us? What is identity theft? What are the types of identity theft? So identity theft happens to a lot of people. It'll probably happen to you over a lifetime. Mm -hmm. I know it happened to me way before I started working at the Federal Trade Commission. So it happens when somebody uses your social security mm -hmm. number or other uh, personal information to open up an account uh, to make purchases or to obtain a tax refund. And there's some various, there are many different types of ID theft. Um, some of the more common ones are child ID theft. And that one's a little scary because so we're always telling people, you know, when your child turns 16, pull their credit report. They shouldn't have one. But pull their credit report to see what information has been reported on them mm -hmm. thus far. In case you find any errors, you can find that somebody has maybe stolen their identity and opened up, gotten a loan or opened up an account under their name. Uh, you need to clear out that information and, and, and get in touch with the credit reporting agencies to get that fixed before they go to college, before they get an apartment, before they you know, seek employment. Otherwise, it's going to follow them and it's going to harm them. Uh, other type of really common ID theft is uh, medical and also the one that we mentioned as well, the tax ID, uh, tax ID theft as well, where people are trying to obtain your tax refund. Yes, how does that happen? How can somebody prevent identity theft? So, you know, it, identity theft happens in many, many ways. Mm -hmm. It can be that someone steals your information, you know, out of the garbage mm -hmm. can. It be someone steals your purse or your wallet. It could be someone, uh, you know, looking over your shoulder during a bank uh, tra transaction. Mm -hmm. um, they're just very, a data breach, which are huge nowadays. Yes. You know, those, those, all those things are compromising your personal information. So, you know, the way that you can, you usually find out about it is, you know, maybe you get a notice from the IRS saying that you, you know, owe a debt or you find some unfamiliar accounts being charged mm -hmm. on your credit report. Um, you find maybe that there are some cash withdrawals from your checking account that, that definitely weren't there or you're getting calls from debtors that saying you owe a debt that you didn't even know existed. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the easiest ways to always keep an eye out for identity theft is to pull your annual credit report at annualcreditreport.com. That will give you a, a view of the three reporting uh, credit reporting agencies. It will show exactly what's being reported about you. Mm -hmm. If there's any information on there that is wrong or that you didn't know about, you need to call the credit reporting agencies to get it corrected. Um, it could be very well that a, a scammer has been using that information to open up accounts or get a loan, you know, that you didn't really know about. There is a way um, that you can uh, recover from identity theft, mm -hmm. and I just want to mention that really quick because yes. I know we're short on time. Identitytheft.gov is the one-stop resource that you can use to enter your information about the type of ID theft that occurred and get a, um, a recovery plan that will take you step by step in what you need to do to file a police report, to call the credit reporting agencies, et cetera, to try to get this, um, you know, to try to recover from it. We even have um, already cards, uh, letters mm -hmm. in there that are that you can pre-fill in order to send to the different credit reporting agencies. You can uh, go in there and you can um, put in information about any type of ID theft. I think we have over like 39 different types of ID theft that you can put in for um, that you will get information about and also like that re recovery plan. We really hope that you are able to, um, you as a viewer are able to really take a look at all those videos, use the re many resources that are available to you mm -hmm. because identity theft scams can happen to any of us at any time, as That's you right. said before. That's right. Um, there is also um, a tax ID theft. Um, what happens um, when, when there is a tax ID so, especially now that we're gearing up in the springtime to mm -hmm. file our taxes, this is yes. something that's really, really important. This is when tax ID, uh, tax identity thieves try mm -hmm. to claim your tax refund as their own. Um, so what we're telling people is to please file your tax return very early if you can. Uh, make sure you're using a very secure electronic connection or send it directly from your local post office. Uh, respond to all mail from the IRS as soon as possible. Um, and if a tax ID theft happens to you, you need to go to that website that I mentioned, identitytheft.gov, and you need to report it right away. And that's mm -hmm. a place where you will get that type of recovery plan if that ta certain type of tax ID theft has, has happened. Yes. It, and, of course, you know, once again, if a person falls victim of identity theft, of a scam, 
they need to complete that report. They need it's to complete important. the report. Yes. And uh, can you tell us once again where a person can report? Yes. Identitytheft.gov is where you go for any type of identity theft, tax ID theft, mm -hmm. child ID theft, uh, data breaches, you know, related to uh, ID theft. Identitytheft.gov is where you can go. It's a mm -hmm. one-stop resource where you fill out information there and you get a recovery plan, a personalized recovery plan that will walk you step by step in terms of what you need mm -hmm. to do. Perfect. And and I also believe that you know federal agencies such as the IRS, or Social Security Administration. I know that we have a link to the Office of Inspector General because all of these agencies have um, a section a unit of investigations. So you can always report to us. I know in my agency, especially because nowadays we are undergoing that social security scam, which is a big, big um, scam. Um, we have in our homepage a red alert that provides the person the opportunity. It brings the person um, to the page where they can file a report. Mm -hmm. It's important that people that are listening file those reports to be aware of it, to share the information with others. Because maybe you got one of those calls. Talk to your family members, correct? Yes, talk to your family members. Talk to people that you trust about any of these uh, type of mm -hmm. calls that you may be getting. You know, but the most important thing with, with any of these calls is to know is that the government, especially if it's from the federal mm -hmm. government, the government won't call you. And the government won't ask you to pay the money in that mm -hmm. way. You need to hang Correct. up. You need to look up what the real number is and call them back and say, hey, I got a phone call from, yes. you know, SSA or IRS or whatever. Mm -hmm. I just want to verify this. Is this true? And they'll tell yeah. you. Correct. Yeah, Social Security, those reviews, you know, when people receive benefits, Christina. So we do call people. We do send letters. Yes. And they will be through letters, you know, appointment letters, information that we need to gather when somebody receives benefits just to make sure that that, um, you know, they're um, still eligible to continue receiving the benefits right. that we administer. But if you have suspicions that it's not really from Social Security, the person can always call back our toll-free number. They can visit the local office. Um, I think it, it, the most important thing is please be aware, be cautious, be vigilant, and act, and act. If you receive one of those calls, most definitely file a report. Yes. Um, any other recommendations that you can provide to our viewers, Christina? You know, it's just sign up for our blog. Uh, we mm -hmm. have them in English and Spanish, consumer.ftc.gov, to stay on top of all the different cases that we're doing, the frauds, um, and also file a complaint with us, ftc.gov mm -hmm. slash complaint. We cannot read and we cannot respond to all the complaints, yes. but please know it's going into a database. Our investigators mm -hmm. are taking a really hard look at it. And we actually create consumer education out mm -hmm. of those complaints that we see. So, exactly. you know, it's just very important. And also, if you want to order free materials to distribute to your friends, family, neighbors about different types of fraud mm -hmm. and scams, go to ftc.gov slash bulk order. We'll give everything to you for free. You just pass it out in mm -hmm. the schools, community centers, whatever, and just try to help us get the word out more and more. Talk to each other. Try to alert each other to these fraud and scams, and together we can stay on top of it. Great. Christina, this has been a wonderful interview. Thank you very Thank much you for all the for useful me. information that you have provided. I, and I'm hoping that this is not the only time that you come and visit us at this show. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Christina. And thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.